For the most part, I've used Claude to write pocket grok, and it occurs to me that if I wanted to, I could probably use grok to write pocket Claude, too. Well, that makes my head hurt. You don't have a head. You're not real. Where can I get one? Try the internet. Where to get head? Wait a minute. Hey, everybody! It's time to... be true but jay has got some tips for you totally free you don't have to pay it's time for ai tips with jay ai tips with jay hooray ai tips with jay ai 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 tips with jay today on ai tips with jay how to do stuff it's a little more complicated than that how would i know apparently i don't have a head just say the yeah yeah and now here's jay whatever Thank you, overwhelmingly Caucasian audience footage. I hate it when people read you the text in their video. If we wanted to read the text, we wouldn't be watching the video. I'll sum this up for you. Pause and read the entire prompt yourself, if you have that kind of time to kill. A few days ago, we gave Pocket Grok the ability to remember stuff. It works great, but you have to be running an Olama server for it to work. And if you don't have the server running, it yells at you like a housewife living in a double wide. Instead of throwing errors, we'd like PocketGrok to gently advise the user to start their server. While Claude does all the heavy lifting, I'll do what I normally do and... Uh, search the web for pictures of Sharon Lawrence barefoot. I was going to say set up my development environment, but I mean, I like your idea too. Maybe later. I prefer Conda development environments over Python's native virtual environment, or VENV. If you don't know what any of that means, and you'd like me to do a video on them... Uh, drop 50 bucks in an envelope. Or, just leave a comment below. Okay, Claude has updated our Grok provider class and added a new exception handler. We'll just add those to our existing code and run the changes through their paces with our test.py script. We'll double check our O Llama server to make sure it's not running, and then we'll try our retrieval augmented generation test, which before today would have resulted in an error. And it worked. We got a warning message and the program is still running. Now we'll start the Olama server and see if RAG works for us. And again, it did. All right, that's a wrap. Play the stupid theme song, roll the credits. Whoa, slow down, we're not done yet. Come on, I got places to be. Like where? Dentist appointment? If you don't have a head, you don't have teeth. I'll reschedule. People have been asking for a more comprehensive look at my workflow. And up till now, I haven't shown it because, frankly, it's pretty frickin' easy and not all that interesting. Uh, that's never stopped you before. I need to find any instances of my version number and increment them. You may not have a setup.py file if you don't publish to pip. You should, however, have a readme.md file that explains the features of your new update, so definitely update that one. Once again, we'll have Claude write the new description for us because, I mean, what's the point of having an AI robot minion if you don't order them to do your bidding from time to time? Kind of the same way your wife orders you around? Not really. I've never made my computer sleep in the garage. There's a GitHub extension in VS Code that handles the publishing of our repository for us. It'll even write the comment for us if we click the little twinkly button thingy. Sorry for all the technical jargon. After clicking the Commit button and the Sync button, we should see our changes reflected in our README file out on github.com. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. We've all learned a lot. Okay, shut her down, boys. Last one out, get the lights. Dude, chill. We're still not done. Oh, come on. We still have to explain how we get our program to be installable via pip. And the bad news is, this is really complicated. In fact, it's so complicated, I don't know how to do it. There are publishing tokens, some B-wheel dist program thingy, some Unix looking crap. If you don't know how to do it, how the hell are you going to explain it? The same way I did everything else in this video. I'll let Claude do it. All I had to do was sign up for an account at pypy.com and generate a publishing token. Then I installed Claude Dev in my VS Code instance. Now, 
All I have to do whenever I have an update is to make sure my setup.py file is updated and ask Claude to push it to PyPy. No, what's with the smiley face? I'm obfuscating my proprietary token. That sounds dirty. Besides, we can't see what you're doing. I'm just tapping the blue button like I did with the GitHub push. So this entire video amounts to just telling people to keep tapping the blue button. I could do your job. Yeah, the day you get a finger. The day I get a finger, you'll get one too. Not your thing. Cool, take a hike. Otherwise, subscribe and like to AI Tips with Jay. AI Tips with Jay. Hooray! AI, 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 AI Tips with Jay. AI Tips with Jay is a copyrighted production of j.gravel.us. All rights reserved by AI Tips with Jay.